or not, not a flashback. Rotatoto. Brush fire, it's me. It seems Mila no longer carries the, her star badge, the symbol of her status as a boss. She gave it to you, did she? I see. Now that there's no boss to lead them, the rest of the Shader Squad shouldn't last long. Oh, Mela. Sorry, I got cut up in my thoughts for a second. Now about your reward. I'll transfer some LP over to your phone, as promised. Oh, 5,000. Cool. Oh, cool. I took the liberty of adding some new entries to the range of TMs you can make at TM Machines. These new TMs should help you improve your Pokemon's battle capabilities even further. In any case, you did some solid work out there. So much so that you deserve an extra reward. Someone from my supply unit will be there soon to give you some materials for making TMs. The Eevee Gal. <laughs> Hello? I'm Penny from the supply unit. You probably don't remember, but you got me out of a tight spot by the school stairs. I was glad to help. Oh, so you do remember. But, um, I'm helping out with Operation Starfall as part of my independent study. You know, the treasure hunt. I'm good with machines and hacking and stuff, so I'll be working behind the scenes. So, here you go. Your bonus reward from Cassiopeia. Oh, Pokemon materials. I love those plus one Minus leggings she's got. You should be able to make a ton of TMs with those. And Cassiopeia said you'll get more rewards each time you take out one of Team Star's bases. Also, um, I heard all about how you had your Pokemon charge into battle. Seems you were pretty amazing. With a trainer as strong as you on our side, I'm sure the operation will go fine. There's four more squad bosses left, so um, good luck. Okay. How are you doing? Um, I'm going through the um, cutscene now. Okay, cool. Oh, she punched me. Who did? Look like it anyway. Well, uh, let me know when you're done. Okay. Um. I think I'm, I think it's finished because I can move around now. Okay. Where are I'm you? I'm like close to the Pokemon Center. It looks oh. like. Oh, I see you. Okay. Let's head on over to the center. Oh, I see a treasure. Yeah. It's a mono berry. Energy powder. Ah. What happened to you? I you leaped you off the, I tried to leap across <laughs> the river and um it didn't work. Oh, yeah, I got caught by a bird. Yeah, the murkrow. Oh, I, there's a gimme go on the bridge now. I'm going to the bridge. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm not gonna try to jump over the Yeah, I had to run over the bridge, yeah. We've got one Titan, uh, one Starfall base, and one gym. I wanted to go back and do some classes. Okay. Okay, and to do that, you just need to bring up the map with the Y button. 
Oh, hang on, my Pokemon are getting healed. Okay, yeah. Okay, Y button? Yes. Um... Okay. I'm guessing that's the school there in the middle. I can't really see anything on the screen. Like, it's. I can see it, but I really don't know what it is. It looks like a pair of eyes blinking. Uh, yeah. That's the, the Rotom is the uh, magnifying glass. So how do I use the magnifying glass? Uh, with the left stick. Okay, that just moves it around. Yeah, and you can use the right stick to uh, turn it around. Oh, oh there what? is Mesagoa. Me Mesagosa, and we can fly. To back to the academy. It just takes some a bit to find it on the map. Okay, um, I really just don't know what I'm looking at. Okay, um, find the great crater of Paldea in the middle. If you use the trigger buttons, you can zoom in and out. Okay, but how do I know if I found what I'm looking for? Oh, if uh, you mouse over it with the magnifying glass, it'll say, um, whatever the name of your academy is. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second, I'll come in there. Thank you, because this is, um, super frustrating. Okay. It's raining. There you are. Okay. Let's go inside and take some classes. Oh, she's actually reacting to the rain. She's got her arm out in front of her. Well, it's not raining for me. Oh. It's like I'm asking the Jenga. <laughs> okay, I took a biology class. What are you gonna take? I don't know. I don't know where to go ask. Well, you just run right in and go to the counter with the Jenga. Oh, okay. Hello, hello. My name is Jacques, and I'll be your Pokemon biology teacher. In my class, we'll all learn about the various quirks of our beloved Pokemon together. I hope you all come to love Pokemon even more for the things you learn here. In today's class, I'll teach you a great way to get to know Pokemon in more depth. If you'd like to become better friends with your Pokemon, you can let them come out of their Pokeball and walk along with you. Sounds great, huh? You can use the ZR button. Okay. Nothing cuter than watching your Pokemon run around underfoot, if you ask me. If you let your Pokemon out, try speaking to them. They'll sure, they're sure to respond in some way. It's a great way to get to know them better. However, letting your Pokemon out of its ball isn't such a great idea in some locations. Can anyone tell me where it is that you shouldn't have your Pokemon walk along with you? Uh, in tall grass. Pokemon love tall grass. I can't see him having any problem walking with you there. The correct answer is that we should not walk with our Pokemon indoors. How about that? <laughs> Some Pokemon might damage walls, dust, and other things walking around inside buildings. So it's not allowed regardless of the species. Therefore, please only let your Pokemon out of their Pokeballs while outdoors, okay, everyone? I think I see them out and about in classrooms from time to time, but still. Anyway, you might become even great closer friends with your Pokemon pals by walking together. Oh, I almost forgot. Keep in mind that you can only walk together with your lead Pokemon. 
Remember, use the ZR button to throw a Pokeball and let out the Pokemon inside. You also want to remember that throwing a ball at a wild Pokemon will start battle. It looks like that's all the time we have for today. See you all next class. That was disappointing. <laughs> it's not what I went to biology for. <laughs> and is it cheating if I answered the question after I heard you answer it? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Are we going to take more classes? Yeah, I'm going to see how much I can take. Okay, I'm taking math class with Miss Time. Okay. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name's Time, and I will be your math teacher. Sorry to put you all on the spot at the start of class, but let me ask you a quick question. Do you enjoy numbers, arithmetic, and the like? Uh, sort of, er, <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for your honest response. Some of you may like numbers and some may not. I think that makes a wonderful mix. No matter your opinion on that. I hope we fi you find yourselves enjoying our lessons together. I'll do my best to find a good way to match up your interests with all types of math lessons. Speaking of which, are you all caught up on your studies of Pokemon type matchups? For example, grass is strong against water, and water is strong against fire, correct? First Fire, you seem good with Pokemon, so let me ask you this. Bearing in mind that strong uh, that water is strong against fire, if the move Water Gun hits a fire type Pokemon, what becomes of the move's damage? It's doubled. That's right, I knew I could count on you for this question, Brush Fire. Using moves of a type that your opponent is weak to is a super effective tactic. It multiplies the damage of those moves by two. On the other hand, using moves of a type that your opponent is resistant to isn't very effective. It divides the damage of your moves by two. Ah, I don't mean to encroach on Miss Dendra's Battle Studies territory, of course, but I thought it best to use a lively topic as an example. That can make math f uh, fun even for those of you who don't like much like the subject, don't you think? Oh, there's the bell. Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next class. I hope you're, you're looking forward to it too. Okay. You want to take history next? Uh, yeah. Okay, Miss Rayford. glad it takes us right to the classes. <laughs> as Me too. Like, yeah, just teleport. As if, it, <laughs> if only it were that easy. <sighs> oh, I see we have some new students here with us today. My name is Rafer. I will be the one to impart knowledge of the past to your little minds. Yeah, oh. Oh, 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 it shows... One of the Pokeballs from Legends Arceus. That's awesome. Okay. History is a wonderful thing. Truly splendid. It has a snap lock on it. Can you tell? Yes. Yeah. I see that. And you, you could make your own Pokeballs in that game. It was awesome. But it was also set in the past. Or our maybe an alternate timeline past. <laughs> yeah. The lives of our okay. ancestors throughout history forged the path to the present in which we live. Today you shall learn about the most mysterious location in all of Paldea, the Great Crater. As you are all aware, a massive crater known as the Great Crater of Paldea exists in the heart of our region. The area inside this crater is called Area Zero, and research of its geological strata and material composition is shown that, has shown that the crater is in fact over one million years old. It is it was long believed that a certain something rested at the bottom of this mysterious crater. Aha, uh -huh. perfect timing to make eye contact, young brush fire. Answer me this. What exactly was believed to rest in the depths of the great crater inside Area Zero? And the answers are treasure, a Snorlax, a Pokemon Center. Snorlax makes sense as a Snorlax. I'll say treasure. 
<laughs> that is correct. You're a surprisingly clever one, aren't you? I see you did your homework prior to coming to my class. No, I did not. <laughs> That's right. Some believe that our treasure more valuable than anything else in the world rested in the depths of the great crater. Her hair is twitching. Yes, it is. Um, yeah, the game is known for its glitches. Okay. Let's see, maybe there was a Pokemon in her hair. <laughs> that would be awesome. So much for dreams of treasure hunting, though. As the lab has been built in those very same depths. And before I forget, you would all do well to remember that the Great Creator and Area Zero are both off-limits to all but those who have official business there. Do not dare entertain the foolish notion of gallivanting off to Area Zero in search of virtues. There's no place for children dreaming of treasure or adventure. Besides, if it were at all possible to investigate the area, I would surely be the first to do so. Oh, is it that time already? I've gotten swept up. I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. And since today's lesson, we will unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. Okay. And then again, I had a. I remember uh, in a science class, like uh, seventh, eighth grade. I was the only one who passed the test, and everyone got really bad grades. And she's like. <laughs> Fresh Fire's the only one who didn't study, who, who studied, and I'm like, I didn't study. And she's just like, well, you listen in class, right? Yes, I do listen in class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, try battle studies and then home ec. Okay. Okay, Miss Dendra. Oh, somebody walked behind me. I've talked so much today, my throat is sore. <laughs> ah. Oh, cute. Oh, Sue, say hello to your battle instructor, the one, the only, the hot blooded Drindra. Oh, Sue is arriving, by the way, look it up. My age, 25. My hobby, working out. My type, well. Strong and muscular fighting types, of course. That's all for my introduction. As for my class, this is where you all learn the nitty gritty of Pokemon battling. And I'm there with Kappa. <laughs> we'll start with the basics so that no trainer gets left in the dust. Even if you're new to this stuff, have no fear. Leave it to me and my muscles and you'll be pros in no time. Let's set our fighting spirits ablaze together. You <laughs> said something else. What did, what did I say? No, I was talking to your father. I'm sorry. Okay. Pokemon have all kinds of attack moves at their disposal, and each move has certain qualities qualities you'll want to remember. I'm talking about the power type and category of these moves. Higher power means more damage, especially if your opponent is weak to that move's type. Heads up, new kid. Question coming your way. There are two categories that attack moves can fall under. Know what they are? Uh... Moves of light and moves of darkness, physical moves and special moves, moves you love and moves you hate. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, it's, but it's physical moves and special moves. I'm gonna pick the last one though. Awesome, you're just as smart as I expected, new kid. Looks like you have a handle on the basis basics. Uh, wh <laughs> what did she say in return? That's not only wrong, it's kind of sad. <laughs> are you okay, new kid, or are you just... <laughs> At that age where you're really into bittersweet stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, attack moves are split into two categories, physical and special. Physical moves do more damage the higher the Pokemon's attack stat is. Special moves do more damage the higher this Pokemon's special attack stat is. On the other side of things, Pokemon getting hit by these moves could take less damage by having a high defense or special defense stat, respectively. I want those gloves. In conclusion, Pokemon that are good with physical moves should raise their attack stat. Pokemon that are good with special moves should raise their special attack stat. Trying to raise both of these stats equally will just make it hard for the Pokemon to shine in battle. Make your strong point stronger, I always say. That goes for both people and Pokemon. Oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home, but I guess we're out of time. We'll generally meet for my class here in the schoolyard, even for book learning. 
Nothing like a little fresh air to make studying more fun, am I right? The class is over for now. Take care, you little rascals. I like her. Yeah. Right? Oh man, yeah. Mr. Saguaro. <sighs> See, we have some energetic yellowings in our class this time around. You may call me Mr. Saguaro. Your time here with me will be spent obtaining knowledge and skills indispensable for daily life. Many of you have left the care of your parents to live here on your own in the academy dormitory. Okay, um... I just want to say... In my high school, we were only allowed to take home ec if we had a high enough grade point average. There's a lot of stuff I don't know how to do because I didn't get to take home ec. I pray that the knowledge I impart to you will improve the quality of your lives and the necessities thereof. Food, clothing, shelter. Of those three categories, I assume the most pressing and interesting for you all is food. When you eat sandwiches on your picnics, the HP of your party Pokemon will be restored. You will also gain something called meal powers, which can provide all manner of benefits. For example, these powers can make Pokemon easier to catch or increase the XP points. Excuse me, that your Pokemon receive. I think you also find that the breadth of these effects will be, can be expanded by crafting sandwiches of superb flavor. What's more, there is a certain something that is particularly important if we wish to receive mill powers with even more helpful effects. Let me see, Miss Brushfire. Tell me, what must you keep in mind to receive even more helpful mill powers? Uh. Uh, my choice of fillings and condiments, how fast I can throw the food. I have to remember to put my heart into it. Ah, uh, that is an interesting take. They're not exactly what I was looking for. I suppose you are correct in a sense. Your choice of ingredients, including both fillings and condiments, is an important factor in gaining even more helpful mill powers. For example, using seeking sweet ingredients in your sandwiches may help you gain egg power. Including numerous bitter ingredients, on the other hand, can gain you um, an item drop power. Hold on a second, I am going to have to cut this out. My nose was not wanting to cooperate. Learning to aim for specific effects when crafting sandwiches will almost certainly make your culinary endeavors more enjoyable. Please be aware, however, that you can also receive mill powers by eating at restaurants. I must say that I feel the utmost joy if you all learned much here in my class and came to better understand home economics. Our time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all feel well. Okay. You want to do one more round before we go? Um, uh, try to find. Um, what am I looking for? Uh, another gem? Well. No. To wait and do that tomorrow. Oh, okay, you you need to stop for now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's it's almost ten. That's all right. Uh, let's go to a, a Poke Center and and save the game. And there's plenty of Pokemon centers outside. So. Rock roof. <laughs> Really easy. Now that they they made it really easy, yeah. Just to, uh, yeah, this Pokemon. I want to be the lead Pokemon. Press Y. You're done. That's amazing. So where are you? Um, I'm running down the steps. I ran outside okay. and ran down the steps to find the Pokemon Center. Okay.
Okay, I can see you running down the steps. And you kind of have to run around the corner to get to the Pokemon Center here. Okay. Like, I should be standing right in front of it. Oops. Okay. Oh, I, I found a treasure <laughs> trying to find you. Okay, I found an oh, ether. Oh, here it is. Oh, good. All right. Dad's yeah, I told her. Yeah. So stand in the circle. Let me come find you. Okay, there we go. We can we'll end on that note. So uh thank you all for watching and this is Brushfire Wind Dragon signing off. <laughs>